In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the different uh, techniques that you can use to analyze tweets. Um, and specifically, uh, this is to do with sentiment analysis. Um, and this is trying to determine whether a tweet is positive or negative in sentiment um, and sort of to what degree is something positive or to what degree is something negative. Um, the reasons why you might do this, uh, the, the popular one that a lot of people uh, will probably want to would be interested in is things like stock market prediction. So you could use sentiment analysis to uh, act as a feature for a machine learning model to either predict uh, in like a supervised fashion what the, the next day or the next week of the stock market might look like, uh, or perhaps as a feature for a reinforcement learning algorithm to use uh, to, to learn uh, whether the market will go up or down. Um, another one potentially could be things like competitor analysis. So a lot of companies might use this um, to, to keep an eye on their competitors um, to see whether they're performing better or worse than themselves. Uh, and that kind of ties into monitoring your own company as well. Um, these are just a few that I could come off with off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's um, a few others as well. Um, this video won't really go into how to obtain a data set of tweets. Um, but if there is enough demand, I can certainly go into that. Um, and the, the options for that are using things like the Twitter API, um, which you have to pay Twitter for, unfortunately. Or the alternative is to try and scrape the tweets. Um, and there's many libraries out there that can sort of do most of it for you already. Um, so in terms of which techniques to use, uh, there's a two pretty popular libraries. I'm sure there's a few others, but the two popular ones are TextBlob and Vader. Um, I'm going to show you in a moment why I think Vader is probably the best one for tweets. Um, and then there's also APIs available by some of the, the cloud companies. So like Google Cloud and IBM uh, and AWS each have their own APIs that you can pay for. Um, but what's interesting is that if you compare the accuracy in terms of predicting whether something's positive or negative, uh, the, the free library... Uh, by Vader, it outperforms IBM, GCP, and AWS. Um, and this, so these three here were were taken from this article here. Um, and then the Vader one was run on the same data that this article used. Uh, you can see that the cross combined reference, so using all three of the APIs, does perform better than Vader. Um, so it got 73% as opposed to Vader 70%. But I think the argument might be is that having to use three um, cloud providers might be quite expensive um, if you're going to be analyzing a lot of tweets. Um, so the second tool which I was talking about was TextBlob. Um, and there's another graph here, uh, sorry, a table here. And you can kind of see that Vader typically uh, works just a little bit better than the TextBlob uh, pattern uh, class. Um, and the reason for this is because Vader was specifically made for platforms like Twitter. Uh, and there's the article here. So this is um, the paper uh, which the people who, who created Vader uh, wrote up. Uh, I'll leave a link for this down below. Uh, it's an interesting read and it goes into a lot more detail uh, about how Vader works. But essentially Vader is uh, a lexicon, which means it's like a, it's a dictionary based uh, technique uh, along with uh, a few rules as well, uh, and we'll show some of these different, uh, the, the way in which it works uh, in a moment uh, with some of this code. Um, so in terms of which technique to use, I would recommend Vader, but uh, I would certainly recommend you try out all of them yourself, um, uh, you know, the APIs and text blob as well. Uh, but to get started with Vader is pretty straightforward. You just have to install the Vader sentiment by doing pip install Vader sentiment. Uh, and then once you have that, you should be able to uh, run it here. Um, and then this is the, the main class that you want to use here, the sentiment intensity analyzer. Um, and for example, this is just a very simple, the food was really good yesterday and we'd expect it to be positive. Um, and you can see, so the compound is what we're looking at. So it's saying uh, it's a 0 0.49. Uh, and this scale goes from minus one to one, where one means really positive and negative one just means it's uh, very negative uh, and everything in between. And zero just means that it's neutral. Um, so you can see that it can understand things like exclamation marks. 
so it'll amplify um, the positivity. So if we run that one, you can see uh, it's slightly more positive um, and it also handles things like capitals. Um, and you can see that works, that makes it even more positive. Um, and it also handles things like negation. Uh, so for example, this one, I'll turn it into a negative. Um, and you can see on their, in their article, they go into all the kind of different details and on their, on their website, on their GitHub page, you can see kind of all the different types of things that it can handle quite nicely. Um, so it can also, I think this was added somewhat later after the paper, but it also handles, uh, like these emojis as well. And if you've got two of them, it, it, uh, kind of makes it more positive, uh, or negative depending on the emoji. Um, so the, the first thing that we talked about was like stock market prediction. And so for example, if you had this sentence, I'm going to buy Apple stock, maybe people don't tweet that, but as, just as an example, um, Vader just doesn't uh, see this as something positive. It just sees it as neutral. Um, and the reason is because it works as a dictionary. Um, and so the words that we might think make this a positive statement aren't in its lexicon. So it's very straightforward to add new words. Um, all you have to do is create uh, a dictionary. Uh, so for example, you might say by is 0.3, or you could just change that to a one meaning positive. Um, and then you can say the word sell uh, is negative. Um, and then you can just add this uh, by doing the following. So once we added that, you can now see that uh, the statement, I'm going to buy Apple stock uh, suddenly becomes uh, more positive than it was before. Um, so in that sense, it's pretty good. Um, and that's sort of why something like Vader might be more beneficial to use than one of these APIs is because instead of it being a black box API, um, you can have more of the flexibility in terms of adding new words. Um, and it's a bit un easier to understand how it works and how it's scoring different uh, tweets. So I hope that's interesting. Um, and these are just some of the techniques. Uh, we didn't really go into too much detail about how Vader works, but perhaps if there's demand for that, I can certainly uh, go through this paper. It's quite interesting. I'll leave a link to this below as well. Um, and yeah, if you, if there's interest in how to, uh, scrape tweets as well, that's uh, an interesting topic, uh, as the Twitter API is pretty expensive. Um, so there's alternative methods, uh, to use for that as well, but otherwise, um, feel free to, to try out Vader. Um, and if there's any questions, feel free to, to send a message, but thanks for watching.